Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to install VirtualBox on an Ubuntu Linux distribution. Okay, so first you want to come here to virtualbox.org, just like we did for Windows, and click on the, the big blue download button. And then what we're going to do is scroll down here to Linux distributions. And we'll click on that. And there's actually two different ways that you can install. Um, one way is to download the package uh, by clicking on one of these links. So you would select the distribution that you're currently running. And then you would, this, for, for example, since we're running, um, I'm running 1804 right now. It's a, my system's a little bit old, but um, so I would choose this one. If you're running a newer one, you could go ahead and do this one, whatever. So for Ubuntu, it uses Debian packages. <clears throat> so if I were to click on this, it comes up and says, what do you want to do? And it would say software install. So if I click OK, <clears throat> then this will download it and it'll open it up and it'll install it using the software install utility, uh, which is fine. You can do that. Um, I'm going to show you how to do the command line option, though, uh, because I think it's a good good thing to know how to do, and it's a good exercise uh, in using Linux. So I'm going to scroll down here to Debian-based Linux distributions, which is what Ubuntu is. And there's, there's a whole bunch of instructions here uh, for how to download and install. And it's actually not that bad. Um, there is a little bit of... Um, there are a few things that you have to do to make sure that we can download and install it, but it's not that bad. So the first thing we have to do here is we have to add um, this distro, or I'm sorry, this repo right here to this file inside your, your Linux directory. And this sources.list is just a list of all the repositories that when you, that it's part of the APT, the, the APT package manager. And so whenever you want to download a package or even up, upgrade a package, um, this list contains a list of the rep repos where those packages are. And so by default, Ubuntu doesn't have the VirtualBox one. So we need to add it to this file so that when we run update, it actually gets all the information for that. Uh, now, the one thing here in this particular line, you're going to do everything in here line for line, uh, you know, exactly as it has, except for right here where it says my dist. You need to put, um, for example, Xenial or Jesse or whichever one you're using. Um, and if you're not sure, if you don't know, um, you can just open up a terminal using Control Alt T and you can do the command LSB underscore release. Attack A, and that will give you um, the information that you need. So you can see I'm running 18.04, and the code name is Bionic. This is what they want. Okay, so if yours is different than when I put it where I put Bionic, you would want to put what yours is. Okay, so I'm going to minimize this because I'll use it in a little bit. Um, so this is what you want to use right here. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is add that line to Etsy app sources dot list. Now you do need pseudo privileges to do this. So make sure that you're logged into an account that has pseudo privileges. Okay. So I'm going to use VI to do this. Uh, you could use gedit. If you just want to use gedit, you can say pseudo gedit slash Etsy apt sources dot list. Okay. And do the ampersand to run in the background. Um, so you could do that, that's fine. Then you can just copy and paste that in. I do think it's good to learn how to use VI. Um, I wouldn't t I wouldn't recommend somebody that, that that's what they develop and that they write code using VI. But there are some times where VI is the only way you'll be able to edit files. For example, if you're if you're uh, logging in remotely to like a device, like an embedded device. You may not have a gra graphical environment. You only have the the shell, and so you have to be able to edit files. And the only thing that's available is VI or Vim. And so it, I do think it's good to, to learn how to use it, and you know use it in that limited capacity. 
Um, other people would say that you want to use VI for everything that you do, but I'm not quite such a purist. So, um, so what we're going to do is we're going to, so you do have to use sudo, even if you're using VI. So sudo VI Etsy uh, apt sources dot list. Okay. So you do have to put your password in. And so you can see here um, that these, like right here, that's that's an archive right there, the archive ubuntu.com bionic universe. So these are all the, this is where whenever we try to um, download a package, it's going to look at all these. Now the ones that have number signs in front of them, those are commented out, uh, so they're not actually in there. Uh, so we're just going to go all the way to the bottom. Okay, down to the bottom. And then if you hit the lowercase o, it puts a new line in there. Okay, so next thing you're going to do is come over here, and we're just going to copy this line right here. Okay. Um, and since you hit the lowercase o and inserted that line, it should be in edit mode. Um, so I'm actually just going to come up here to edit and paste, and it'll just paste it in there. Okay. Now I'm going to hit escape to get back into the... So I'm going to navigate to here, and then I will go into insert mode, and now I'm going to type bionic, okay? And then I'll hit escape again to get back into command mode, and then you just move over and you hit X. When you're in command mode, you hit X, and it'll delete the current character. Okay, so this is what we want. We want this line at the very end of our sources.list. So hit the escape, and hit colon, WQ. Okay, so this will write and quit. So there we go. So we want to make sure that it worked. We can just cat let's see apt sources.list. Okay. And we should see at the very end right here, we've got our um, new new line right here. Okay. So now what's next in the instructions? So next is we want to add the uh, the key, the Oracle public key, uh, for the repo that we just added. And so since I'm using 16.4 or above, we're going to use this one right here, which is the VBox 2016. So you can do this line right here, or you can just do this line right here. Which So here you could download it and then run this. But... They've got this nice convenient line in here that you can run and we'll just copy and paste it so you can see the whole line there. Run it and it's ready to go. Okay. So now we can come down here and we're ready to do sudo app get update. So what this is going to do is update the list, the listing of all the packages that are available. And so since we've added the line virtual box line to the sources dot list this will update that so it'll get a list of all the packages that are available at that repo so just do that takes a couple seconds all right so now we're going to install virtual box so we'll do sudo apt get install box which is so I'm just copying this right here this text right here okay and that's 6.1 so right now the version I'm looking at is 6.1 it might be different in the future um, you can also install older versions if you want by just changing the version number at the end I generally just go with the most recent okay so go ahead and do this this will take a little bit of time so it's gonna ask you you know it's gonna Take up 214 megabytes of space, that's fine. Yes, and continue. This will take a few minutes. Okay, so now it's finished. Um, <clears throat> so you notice right here, it creates a group called VBox users. Now on mine, it says it already exists. That's probably because I had a, previously had VirtualBox installed on this one. Um, but on yours, it should go, it should create that. Feedbox users for you. So 
I'm just going to go ahead and clear this so I have a clear screen. So before we move on, there's one thing that we should check, um, and that's to make sure that the current user is a member of the VBox users group, um, because you won't be able to start VirtualBox unless the current user is a member of that group. Uh, so you can do that pretty easily by just typing groups and then the name of your user. In my case, it's dev. And that lists that he's in dev and he's in sudo. So mine actually didn't add, get added to VBox users. Um, it's possible that's because the VBox users group already existed on my computer when VirtualBox was installing. And you may not have this issue. If, you're, if your show is VBox users, then that's great. Then you're good to go. If not, then you may need to add it. So to add a user to a group, you use user mod, A for add, capital G for group, the name of the group. So we're going to use VBox users, and then the name of the user. So this is going to add dev to the VBox users group. So we'll do that. And you may need to use sudo. I'm not sure. Let's go ahead and do it. OK, so there we go. So now we'll try it again, groups dev. And now we're VBox users. So another thing I want to show you um, is a utility that gets installed on your system when you install VirtualBox. Um, it's in the root sbin directory. So we'll cd slash sbin. And then we're looking for VBox config. So let's say I'm going to pipe to VBox should be fine. Uh, oh, sorry, I need to grep. I forgot to do my grep. There we go. Okay, so VBox config, the bottom one, that's what I want. So this is a utility that um, configures v the VirtualBox uh, daemon. And so, you know, it'll shut it down, it'll configure it, it'll recompile the modules if necessary, and then start the daemon again. So if you have problems starting VirtualBox later on, you may come in here and run this. You'll need sudo. Just like that. You enter and it'll run it for you. Um, I wouldn't. I would say don't do this unless you have issues. Okay. If you if you install this a clean on a clean system, you probably will not have issues. Um, but some people have problems where they will upgrade to a new version or they'll install VirtualBox on um, a system that previously had VirtualBox, and then they'll run into some issues. And so running that utility will sometimes fix it. Okay. So hopefully you don't have that problem. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and close this out. Okay, so now you should have VirtualBox installed. So click down here on these, this menu. So you can see it right here, but if you don't see the icon, then you can just search for virtual. You should find it. So click on it. Open it up. So here you go. And we're finished. In another video, I'll discuss how to set up an Ubuntu image inside VirtualBox so you can create your development environment. I hope you found this video useful. Please leave any comments or questions, and I'll see you in the next video.